Is this what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that cave, when he was there in cave Hira, and what he was thinking about was that one day his ummah would be okay with a man marrying a man and a woman marrying a woman? Is that what he was pondering about? Is this what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the Quran? In which he has given this kitab to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he will be a witness for us on the day of judgment? Is this how we are going to shame him in front of Allah? And then we're going to run to him and ask him to seek intercession for us? What are we going to turn to him and say on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah? And on that day that he was in cave Hira, and he was contemplating on human beings, on mankind, when he was meditating, and when Jibreel السلام, came to him, Iqara bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Iqara, read, read, read in the name of that. What is he going to read? He was unlettered. He did not know how to read. He was unlettered. He was an intelligent man. But look at the miracle of Allah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Read in the name of thy Lord who has created you. Who has created you from a congealed clot of blood. Read Subhanallah. This injunction that came to him, immediately what did he do? He got scared. When Jibreel alayhi salam came in his original form and hugged him, he says it three times. He says, I don't know how to read. What can I read? And Allah gave him the ayah. And Allah says, Iqara. Again, he says, read. He says, I don't know what to read. And Jibreel alayhi salam hugged him and says, Iqara bismi rabbik alladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. Iqara wa rabbuka al-akram Alladhi allama bil-qalam Allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam And immediately he ran home and what did he do? He went to Khadija radiallahu anha He went to Khadija radiallahu anha And he said something has happened I think I have seen a jinn I think something is happening I don't know what's happening here but she related the story and he was scared, he was afraid. And she comforted him. And what did she say to him? Allahu Akbar. He said, it was something I have never experienced before. It was something he has never experienced in his life. Here it is, a being that came to him. That was telling him to read in this cave, a lonely cave. And so she reminded him of who he was. She said, Zambiluni, Zambiluni. What did she say? Cover me. He said, cover me. He was telling Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha, cover me, cover me. I'm scared. Cover me. Ya ayyuhal muzzammil. Allah addressed him. Oh the, oh, the one who's wrapped up. Allahu Akbar. Hmm. Subhanallah. And then what happened? She reminded him of something in which he used to do in his life and he continued to do it until his death. She reminded him and it was the pathway, it was the blueprint for Muslims to follow. Because that society never had a blueprint. And he set the precedent for us Muslims. And you know what she said? Brothers and sisters, subhanallah. She told him, she said, your Lord, God will never disgrace you. Because you know why? We want to have success in life. Listen to what he said, subhanallah. She said, and she reminded him. She said, you keep and you unite relations with your kith and your kins. Allahu Akbar. She keep reminding him. She's reminding him. She's uplifting him. Uplifting him. Giving him encouragement. Because she knew, you know, her uncle, Waraka bin Nawfil, 
who was a priest. He had the knowledge of the Kitab. And so she understood that this is only a divine message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as Jibreel came to Isa alayhi salam. Just as Jibreel came to Musa alayhi salam. Just as Jibreel came to all the prophets alayhi salam. And she reminded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of who he was. She reminded him of who he was. And what did she say? She told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She says, you keep and unite relations with your kith and your kins, your friends and your bonds with your family. You bear the burden of the weak. You help those who are poor and needy. Subhanallah. You help the poor and destitute. You entertain guests generously. You feed them. You help them in whatever way you can. You endure hardship in the path of truthfulness. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran? Over 60 plus times. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Surely those who believe and enjoy in doing good. He even did it before he was a prophet of Allah. And Allah gave him prophethood. And this now became the blueprint. It became that foundation for him to believe now that this is the beginning of your message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing revelation to him now. Allahu Akbar. But look at the blueprint in which Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha had reminded him of. And look at what he did. He took this Quran and he exemplified it. And in 23 years, he changed the nation of people. In 23 years, he not only changed his nation, he changed the world. How much have you changed? Ask yourself that question. Because of you, how much have you changed? Whose life became impactful when you are dead? How much of you will stand here and say, if I die now, if I was to close my eyes now, my Rabb will be pleased with me. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us in the Quran. وَعَبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا and worship and do not associate any partners with Allah. And be good to your parents. And be good to your parents. And to your relatives and to the orphans. Look at the injunction. To your relative and to your, injun and to your orphans. وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَجَارِ ذِي الْجُنُوبِ بِالْ وَجَارِ ذِي الْجُنُوبِ وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ وَبْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And to be good to your parents, and to your relatives, and to the orphans, and to the poor, the miskeen, you know the miskeen, and close neighbors and far neighbors and companions on your side meaning people you travel your companions people next to you your spouse your family and be good to people who are your and back then they were slaves be good to those people your slaves your servants your employees your children your family be good to them an injunction of the quran and be good to them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna Allah la yuhibbu mukhtalan fakhura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not like those who are arrogant and who are proud of themselves. This is what we have to follow in our life. Subhanallah. I'm looking at my teacher here today. I begin my journey in this, in this com community. And get emotional speaking about it. With his guidance, with his guidance, you know, he's like a father to me. This is the mercy of Allah that he has put me in the line of Mohan Shafat and the work that he does. Sat when I was 16, 15 years old, I started in Darul Alum. And not in a million years I could have ever thought to myself that one day that I would be traveling the world doing what I do. 
but it was only through the guidance of my teacher. You know, al ulama warathatul anbiya. And I'll tell the students who are here, and those of you who are benefiting from him. You know, I left this community in 2006. I moved to Atlanta. But you know, one thing I've held dear to him, and he's here as a witness to it, we have always, always communicated. From my closest secrets to everything that I do in life, I run it by him, first thing, first and foremost. Because I understand that the guidance of my teacher, Al-Ulama'i wa Rathatul Anbiya, the ulama are the inheritance of the prophets. And I'm standing here today, subhanAllah, you know, 36 years old, 36 years young, I should say, right? And, you know, I seek his advice in many different things, as I said. And the reason why I'm speaking like this today, because I've now taken up a journey in my life. And he is the one who has helped me to choose his direction. Many times I went to him, you know, what do you think I should do here? Do you think it's wise to do this? Do you think it's wise to do that? And many different organizations has, you know, contacted me before. I liaison with my teacher. I always tell him, give me some time, let me think about it. But I stand here today not knowing that 36 years later, after spending so many years with my teacher, that an opportunity that Allah will, will give me an opportunity to serve this deen. And you know what? He is here as a witness and through his guidance, you know, I'm inshallah going to be the regional director for Ikna Relief Organization in the Southeast, Mideast region. And it's not an easy task. This comes with a lot of you know, thoughts comes with a lot of guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have never thought in a million years that I would study here and I would go and move to somewhere else and established over there and traveling, doing khutbas, doing lectures, doing uh, fundraisers, traveling overseas. I've never thought about this. But you see, brothers and sisters, the reason why I'm saying this is if we don't stand for something today, we will not stand for anything tomorrow as an ummah. We have people amongst us who are a blessing. We have people who are amongst us whom Allah has given that knowledge and that guidance to. And be very fortunate students that we have our teacher here with us. And you know, I, you, you were here when I did my first khutbah, you know. And I was scared to death my first Jum'ah khutbah. I know he used to give me 10 minutes before Salah and I would speak with, you know, one chapter of the Quran, a small chapter, Surah Teen. We did, uh, you know, Surah Teen. We did Surah Humaza. We did so many little surahs and then he would elaborate in his khutbah. And that's how I begin, subhanAllah. Brother Azhar Ali is here. He witnessed everything. But now, you know, Allah, alhamdulillah, with the mercy of Allah, he has given me this position. And you know what? It's so ironic that I just took this position and I'm here today as the first announcement in any of the communities across the U.S. that I've made personally, that I will lead the organization in seven different states, inshallah. You know, so Florida is not my territory, but I'm going to help them a lot, inshallah. But seven different states, and this, like I said, comes only by the guidance and the mercy of Allah. When you stick to the path of Allah, when you stick to the Quran, when you stick to the Sunnah, when you follow the Quran and the Sunnah, and you follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is unimaginable mercy that will come your way. There will be unimaginable blessings that will come your way. And as the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam exemplified this, when he was scared, his wife reminded him of who he was. And we should take from this example. And I want to show my heartfelt gratitude to my teacher, Maran Shafaib, and all my teachers. You know, so many teachers that Pari Abdul Jalil, Brother Yusuf, so many different teachers that I've sat with and, you know, me teachers that would come from England, you know, subhanAllah, we benefited from so much, you know, and I'm still learning. I still seek my teacher's advice, you know, but my heartfelt gratitude to this community, to this institute for helping me to be who I am today. For without that guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I think many of us will be in a different direction. I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts my efforts. And I pray and I ask each and every one of you to make dua for me and my family.
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for my journey, inshallah. It's my first full-time Islamic work that I'm starting in the U.S. So it's basically the beginning of my Islamic career on a different level. I've been doing it, been lecturing, khutbah here, there. The last uh, several weeks, been traveling every week, every Friday to a different state, doing khutbah. It's been doing, but now inshallah, put it full-time inshallah. And my, I see this in my, in my teacher's life, alhamdulillah, that, you know, he exemplified this. His whole life is da'wah. Tomorrow they're having, uh, uh, is it a lunch? A lunch for the, um, for the senior citizen, right? This is a form of da'wah. I see the Al-Hikmah TV. I look, I, I, I watch all the programs. I look and see who, is, who they're hearing, the type of people, and the, the da'wah efforts in which Al-Hikmah is putting in, and I said, subhanAllah, I want to be like that one day. And here it is, Allah has given me an opportunity you now to serve an organization that does relief work throughout the United States of America, that does so many different programs from a disaster to feeding the hungry. And this is what Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi this is what Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha reminded the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of to help the poor and the destitute, to help those in need. So whatever way Allah has given you an ability, utilize it for the sake of Allah. Whether you're a doctor, you're an engineer, you're a lawyer, you are, it does not matter. You can be a warehouse worker. Utilize whatever Allah gave you in your life and Allah will give you the barakah.